I'm going to try to be makatsu. We'll try to keep it within an hour. Um, this original shirt took closer to two hours. I'm going to some of the source some some of the, some of the source sheets uh, some of the sources I'm going to do outside, and we'll try to cover most of the main key points. But I, I'll be honest with you: when I started researching this topic, I, I, I was it was a Obviously, when it comes to a minig of, of of your group, you know you have to follow it, but we don't. You don't necessarily understand the minhagim, and this minhag actually has, you know, it's it's it, it's it's challenging to understand. Um, but we know that we we follow the customs regardless of if we understand them. But in, in looking into some of the sources of this subject, I, I came to some clarity in regards to um, understanding um, some of the aspects. And some of the challenges that, that are that are presented on this topic. Um, to note that there's been many, many attempted approaches. I say attempted in the sense that many of the approaches that will that are presented, even in Svarim, are some of them are more there are Hakabala, some of them are more there are Hadrush, some of them are, 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 are over my head. I'm not sure which derech, but uh, the, the approach that at least we're going to try to take today is more of the halachic, um, you know, let's say uh, more uh, a pshat approach to understanding um, the minig of Hasidim going back generations, the times of the Balshemtiv, and as we'll see from certain sources, even um, in, we see sources in the 16th century already that there were many gedolim, and we see even comments in the Rishonim that, that, that give major support for this concept and perhaps not even support, but it actually might even be an encouraged practice already in, in much earlier sources. Um, um, okay, so uh, you'll have to bear with me because I, uh, I'm still in the middle of Sukkot Um Okay, so the, the first source, again, is a, because there's so much on this question um, and so many, so many beautiful uh, Concept. So I'll just I'll just throw out one to for those chiddush uh, that we'll give them their bones, so to speak, to have a chiddush approach to understanding this, and then we'll get into the somewhat more halachic understanding. So Rebbe which was always known to uh, to give the positive spin to different practices. So he has actually a very cute approach to understanding this concept, which, as we'll see in source three, it's a mishnah. The Mishnah seems to say that if you're sitting in the sukkah and it's raining, essentially the simple understanding is the king is the, the king is you're, you're trying to help out the king and he says get, get out of here and uh, leave. So his approach is like this. Um, he says uh, let's uh, so he quotes from Levi Yitzchak and uh, the second line says he was always trying to find uh, um, kind things to say about the Jews and whenever there was anything negative, I'll actually just mention this year. And, and, you know, even the Rebbe, um, Rabbi Rauskin had pointed out that, that, uh, that um, the Rebbe obviously quoted various sources that give different interesting rationalizations to this practice. But were, in the 60s, I believe, the Rebbe used to have a tradition um, where he would invite non labavitch yeshiva students for a lecture one day at Cholomoyed. And... Uh, and he would um, and he would present various concepts in nigla to the bach, to these bacharim. Um And one year, I, I forget, I have to check my notes, but in the sixties, the Rebbe discussed this. The Rebbe talked about this Mishnah, and he says, "When it rains on Sukkot, it's it's, uh, it's 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 unfortunate, and the kings the, the Abishter is not happy." But the Rebbe was bringing out the positive side, and he said that we were lucky this year at the first two days of Sukkot, it didn't rain, which are the, the, the main two days of Sukkot. So therefore that shows that Hashem really loves us and Hashem is really shining his light in an open, revealed way and so on and so forth. Um, so we see even the Rebbe, you know, didn't leave the simple shot to the Mishnah that when it rains on Sukkot, it's talking not a good thing. Um, and, and, and this year, actually, in Pittsburgh, at least, um, we were Zaycha that the first two days of Sukkot were beautiful. So it parallels the what happened that year. So the Bilebi Yitzchak Abedishev says um, like this. Um, he says, nonetheless, I'm going to give you an interesting spin that when it rains, it's actually a positive. He says, if you look in the end of the second line of source one, he says, Sukkis, when it occasionally rains, and Sukkis, this is actually a, a common expression of Bilebi Yitzchak, he would say that this is actually a blessing. Those that are familiar with the um, the Hasidic practice practice 
of you know maybe you heard it from your bubbas that when they would uh, they would they would talk about different um, beautiful things happening in the family how many children do you have can I know and there was a poo 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 so what's the uh, Kabbalah of saying poo 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 so poo 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 is this is what Rebbe is talking about he says you, you would, it's like spitting. And spitting is, you're saying it's really, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not a, it's, it, you know, it's nothing so big. You know, don't make such a big deal about it. Why? Because I don't want to make an eye in horror. So Oblivious Luke is saying that Hashem is throwing tremendous blessings upon the Jewish people. And he doesn't want the Sultan to, to, uh, to be makatarig. So therefore he says, you're getting all the brachas, poo, poo, poo. And the rain that's coming in the sukkahs is like Hashem is spitting and saying, poo, poo, poo. It's not such a big deal. He's saying that to the Sultan, but really Hashem is sending tremendous blessings. Okay, that's going to be the end of the Chesed um, HaShetayda for um, this morning. Um, so there's a fascinating halachic slash philosophical um, um, rabbi. His name is Abdovid Akubi in Source 2. So over there, he makes a very interesting point. And based on this point, he actually asks a fascinating halakhic question. So he says philosophically in the first paragraph, what is the message of Sukkot? So he says it's actually a very important message in gratitude to the Almighty. And he says, if you look in the third line, he says, so the third line is always, he says, what's essentially, in his estimation, philosophically happening during the holiday of Sukkot? So during when the Jews were in the Midbar, in the desert, things were some, there were, there were, there were challenges. It wasn't so gishmak. And now we're sitting in, in settled land, and it's a wonderful place. Um, but he says that, you know, Sukkot is the time of the harvest and we have so much good. So we remember we were used to be in Egypt. We used to have struggles. And even in, even in the desert, it wasn't so, uh, there, you know, it wasn't as uh, enjoyable as it is now. So when you're in your, your time of plenty, as he concludes in the third line, we want that we're sitting in the sukkah and the concept of sitting in the sukkah is actually to feel a little bit uncomfortable and to remember that times were not always so rosy and nonetheless a person should be to the Baruch Hu, um, that things are good so based on that frekt to say for about him an interesting question if so why do we have a halach and hilcha sukkah that when you're mitzvah, when you're uncomfortable, you're part of the mitzvah? L'chayda, the inyan of sukkah is that you should be, is that you should be uncomfortable. So masha omru mitzvah v'chayla m'sham z'abtur min ha-sukkah v'tam teishu ke'en dudu. He says, an interesting just uh, categorization or classification, he says, en chanami, the point of a sukkah is to be a little uncomfortable, but it's only just a little bit. Why? Because the mitzvah is that you should live in the sukkah. The same way you live in your house. Therefore, if in your house you would reach a point where you would leave the house due to discomfort, therefore you also should leave the sukkah. So it's a technicality, but really there is an aspect within the mitzvah of sukkah that we do have a zikot in for the inyan of discomfort. And, and therefore it's not totally far into the mitzvah of sukkah, but you know, even that has a shear. And therefore, um, if you have, I have pain, you, 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 you're part of from the sukkah and one should leave the sukkah. Okay, so as we mentioned, the Mishnah in Source 3, um, at the end of the, the, the last three lines of the Mishnah, tells the famous Moshul, the Moshul of the range in the sukkah, and the Mishnah gives the exact measurement that reigns to the point where your, your soup or your dish is going to become um, distasteful, and th at that point you leave the sukkah, and it's a Moshloi, and this is actually, a, I, I'm, not, I'm not such a bookie in Mishnayas, but very rarely does the Mishnah give a moshul. And we're going to discuss this in more detail, but the, in halachic, in chassidus, we have a lot of moshul. When it comes to a halachic matter, you know, a moshul is, is not so common. So over here, we give a moshul. This is moshul lama davardayma. What is the concept analogous to? A servant that's coming to his master, and he's coming to make the wine drinkable by adding water. That was the practice. Wine was in its raw state. Is, is very, is, is too strong to drink. And you have to add a certain amount, quite a bit of water in order to make the wine have a good taste. And while the servant was in the, mat, was in the, in the process of making the wine, um, mazug, 
the, 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 the king came and spilled the whole, spilled the water that he was going to use to put into the wine on the, the Evid's face. I guess at least he didn't pour the wine on his face. You know, he, he didn't want to waste the wine. He just poured the water. Um, so there was an, there's an interesting comment to the Vilna Gun, and I was trying to find it. I couldn't dig it up. He says that Yayin represents Din, as we learned in, in the Kodetayra, the, the Sukkot Mamadim, it's a common, um, and, 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 and water represents Chesed. So Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur is the wine. We're coming out the Sukkot to add the Chesed to the water, and to add the Chesed to the wine, and to make it, and the king, pour, the king pours it, which is interesting, I guess, just uh, connected to our discussion, the Indian of Mayim is Chesed. So it's, a, it's an interesting, uh, uh, um, I think that that fits in as we're going to see to, you know, is it, is, is, is it a negative? Is it a positive? Is there something actually very deep in the water? I mean, wine is more tasty, but water is, a, is it from a higher level and it's a little bit abstract. And the Mamadim talk about the Indian of Bina, Bina's Makifim and so on and so forth. So you could deal with a level of Hasodim that is not necessarily experienced as joyful, but it does, it doesn't entail with it different joy. Okay. So, so the, the generally I'd say if we have to summarize and finish this within one hour, there's two big questions that we're going to try to tackle at least on a, um, on a halakhic level. One is a general concept you have throughout, throughout halacha. I think uh, Yankee Delin approached me like six years ago. We've been talking about this subject ever since you can ask him about it. Um, we, 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 if you look in the index of the Shulchan Aruch for the concept of Yuhara, Yuhara is where the Shulchan Aruch discourages a person from being showy. And it, 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 it requires a lot of research to understand the halachic um, understanding of when is a person allowed to be extra from. You know, as Chassidim, we know we're Mahadur B'mitzvah. So we're going to discuss now the first subject is... Is, I, I, is, is there a limit to how from you're allowed to be? Actually, if you look in the Encyclopedia Talmudis, um, under the Erech of Kol HaPotr, I think in the in Encyclopedia, there's close to 15 pages of sources on this subject matter. So there's a lot to discuss. So, so, the, cliff, so, so the first question that we're going to try to address is that in relation to this specific practice, the Rishonim, and it's actually originally in the Maril, applies the comment of the Talmud Yerushalmi in source six, which we'll see shortly, regarding a person that's exempt from something and does it, that person is referred to as a hedyet, as a simpleton, as someone with, it's a derogatory term. So the Shulchan Aruch in source four applies that to this concept. And he says that, uh, look at the bottom of source four, the Ramar Moshe Isulish, and his comments to the Shulchan Aruch in chapter 639. So he says, Regarding if it rains, so a person that's potter from the sukkah and you do not leave, you do not receive reward. So that, that, that's like, okay, you know, uh, by, by, by uh, the concept of not receiving reward, a reward is not such a shayla because okay, I, won't, I won't get reward and I'll be, I'll be even a bigger mitzvah and any mitzvah vice. But the second issue is much more problematic. It's just a, it's a simple, it's a nadish kite. To do that, or I'm, I'm translating it to Bashkal it's a hadiatis to say, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an empty act, it's nothing. And then he says, moreover, he quotes the Gemara, which we're going to see, a Gemara in Tainus, when you leave the sukkah, the Gemara in Tainus, hopefully we'll get to that at the end. Uh, actually, if you read that Gemara, there's actually quite a bit of support for, or there is some support for our practice, but we'll get to that later. Because when you leave the sukkah because of the rain, I'll you buy it. You shouldn't, um, well, we'll get into the translation of Yabayat, but you shouldn't kick and, uh, and do it in a, in a haughty way and be upset. Rather, you should go out very humbly because the king is upset at you and don't make a scene. So the two issues that we're going to try to address is, A, if sitting in the sukkah while it rains were referred to as a hedyet, as a simpleton, then how do we get around that? How, you know, we, we don't want to be simpletons. An idiot. Okay, an idiot. I, I didn't want to go to... So, <laughs> oh, 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 okay, okay. Um, and the second matter is, if the king's saying leave and you're not leaving, that's, that, that, that's an even bigger question. How do we analyze that? How do we make sense of that on a halakhic level? The Shulchan Aruch says you have to leave. How can we not follow the Shulchan Aruch? And so on and so forth. 
with names or with the names. Okay, it's a good point, and, and, and some do take the approach, this whole discussion, and this is one of the, of the approaches that I did not bring, because I, 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 it didn't, to me it didn't seem like it was the Poshet Pshat, but it, some, some say this whole muscle of the Mishnah is specifically for localities like Arichi Sroh in the time of the Mishnah, when it normally didn't rain or rain, it rain. But I would say, if you ask my simple opinion, that's a big chiddush, because the Ramah or Meshur Isilich is, is in Poland, and he's saying this din. Well, well, the Ramah brings them a Moise Kaisler, and I'm saying the Shem is not going to say that. 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 The Shem is not say that. The Shem is not going to 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 but yeah, it, 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 such, such approaches present. So briefly to summarize sources five, six, seven, and eight, five, six, and seven, I would recommend you, you look you at it in more detail. But the Alter Rebbe discusses this in a chapter in Shulchan Aruch, chapter 32, which is usually a chapter that most people skip um, unless you want to become a cipher because it's, it's chapter 32 and chapter 36 are, are very complicated chapters that go into the, the writing of a tefillin and, and also other safras halachas and the details of making all the letters. Actually, the uh, the new version of the Kahas Shulchan Aruch makes this a lot easier to understand. He has pictures for every single letter, and he makes it easier. But in the middle of that discussion, Maybe the Altarebbe, um, the Shulchan Aruch, actually, um, in chapter 32, yeah, look it up. Um, uh, brings up this discussion of right. taking on Chumras. And, okay. and the basic, and he's referencing this Yerushalmi. So basically, the halacha is that when you're writing... Let me just, sorry. I, so when you're writing a, when you're writing a mezuzah, um, so the Gemara says a mezuzah requires scraping, engraving a line on every line of the mezuzah. By tefillin, you only are required to scrape the first line, and that's a whole discussion of shirts with the lachlamites and the Sinai, and so on and so forth. So the question is, the custom has become that even for mezuzah, even for tefillin, we, we make a sirtut on every single line. So how does that work if seemingly the halacha is that you don't have to take on the stringency of doing it on every single line? Why has the practice become to make a sirtut on every line of even by tefillin? So the al Rebbe, based on the Magen Avram and the, the Shulchan Aruch, quotes two, two approaches to explaining why this is not an issue. And he says, basically, we don't say this issue of adiyotis in one of two cases. One is if what you're doing beautifies the mitzvah, is a hidur mitzvah, then there's no issue of being extra pro. Um, the second one is if this is in order to prevent you from goofing off and coming to some prohibition, so it's kind of like a fence, then uh, from Kaip is okay. The Maril on his notes, the brother of the Altareb on his notes in chapter 32, he references sources 9, um, 10, and 11, which I'll summarize, and 12. We'll, we'll, we'll look mainly at 12. But he, he presents a third approach to explaining when stringencies are okay. And basically, he says this, this, this that we say that a person shouldn't be extra from is only in a case when, when it's showy. If you look in the in the Ravio in source 11, yuhara. That's where the word yuhara is introduced in the Rishonim. Yuhara is something where, where you're, you're going to stick out. And you're gonna, they're going to say, oh, he's Mr. Holy. And in that case, that's where the Torah, they don't want people to to open, be openly um, extra holy and, and come to maybe a haughtiness and gaiva, and it was something that was discouraged. So that's, the, so that, that, that's, the, that, that's actually how the Maril explains the famous mission in Saita, that chosid well, shaita. What's a chosid shaita? A chosid shaita is a person, the way the Ramam understands it in Source 10, and, and, the, and this, is, this is kind of the, the discussion, is that a person that is the whole concept of a chosid, this, this is how I'm explaining it, maybe this is not a correct approach, but a chassid is generally someone that gets along with other people, and he's, uh, 
he's Ma'uriv Ben Abriyas, and he's uh, he's a uh, he's 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 Mishas. You have one for your father. Um, so so a uh, Chassid is like Rabbi Yitkin, you know, everyone loves him. But if you're gonna be a uh, if you're gonna be like uh, someone that's showy, so it's the opposite of a Chassid. It's a Chassid Shaita, and that's that's you. So therefore, says the Maril, or at least he, this is what he seems to be alluding to, because the general practice has become, and actually in Source 12, the base, the base, this is based on the Avudraham, and he says, let, let's look at the last two lines of Source 12. And he says, and this is actually, he adds an interesting word. Now that even there's a noticeable minority of Yidin, that have accepted a certain practice to do sirtut, to put lines in every line of the tefillin. So because it has become a common, somewhat of a common practice, therefore the mechsi kiyuara, that, that it appears as if you're showing off. In other words, even if you're not actually showing off, even if you're, you're seriously pious and you want to be extra thrown, but someone might think that you're trying to show off, that's mechsi kiyuara, that, so that's discouraged. But over here, because it becomes a common practice, if something became a common practice, then this issue of the Yudashalmi of Kala Isa Maisa Hedya, there's not a problem. That would be the third rationale as to why there's no issue. Oh, oh, yeah. So there's a lot of examples, and I referenced in Cycle Bidikam with this. There's like a, a 12, 15 pages on this topic of Kola Oisa so, 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 based on that, just to summarize, so Lachaida, if there's a, there's a, there's a, to answer this first question of that Amma says it's a Maisa had Yaitis because in the days of that Amma, or at least in his community, no one sat in the sukkah during the rain. But if, if it becomes the practice of a, of a noticeable minority to take on, Let's assume it's an extra stringency. And this issue of Maisa had Yaitis is not going to be an issue. We still need to understand, is it a hid or mitzvah? But at least, at least to a certain degree, we can say that if something becomes a noticeable practice, the issue of Maisa had Yaitis is not going to be an issue. Solution number two is going to be more satisfactory um, to understanding. So according to the first two approaches of hither mitzvah and preventing a coming to a Maisa Iser, like the Alta Rebbe says in the parentheses over there. Um, so then, you know, it's a little more schwer. But according to the base Yosef, the third approach, it's the easiest to explain because the whole union of a Maisa Had Yaitis is only when it's not a practice of a noticeable minority. Once it reaches that extent, then you're not concerned about it. Do we have the other two issues? It could be we do. If, you, if we can hope maybe in the next 45 minutes explain why there's a hither mitzvah and sitting in the sukkah, then maybe you could even satisfy the other opinions. And if you can satisfy and say that sitting in the sukkah is going to lead you to, you know, not coming to some other isser, that would be a little more challenging, then, uh, then, then perhaps you can explain it according to all the shit. But at least, at least according to this approach, it's a, there's a simple hezber to why at least the Maisa had yaitis is not a, a question. If you could remind me to do a shyness after the share, I'd do it, yeah. Um, okay, solution number two. Um, so this is from, this is from the Kafa Chayim, a student of the Ben Ishchai, a famous Sephardi Paisik. And he, I'm not going to read it inside in the interest of time, but he quotes from earlier Rishonim, the Eila Shmuel and others, and he makes a very interesting approach um, regarding this issue of Maisa Hedit. And he says, it seems to be like even a fourth knech, or perhaps he's understanding some of the other Rishonim slightly um, in a more nuanced way. But he says the issue of Hedyaitis is specifically if it's a stringency that's going to lead to a leniency. It's a chumra de osili de kula. And the, an example of that would be that that, 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 that comes to mind um, outside of this context is like on Purim. The Mr. Brewer quotes in the, the halachas about the layada. We know the Shulchan Aruch has many, the, the Rishonim have many different opinions about becoming intoxicated on Purim. And what's exactly the share of being intoxicated? Mr. Brewer says, if your intoxication is going to come to lead you to doing even some minor violation of halacha, for example, not forgetting to bench or making a bite of a fascist, or uh, slapping your friend in the nose, or something like that. So any sort of minor um, infraction, that would be a chumrah of trying to fulfill all these fancy shittas of Adelayada, 
Those who are cooler, which you're going to violate, maybe even a chi of deiraisa benching, and that's obviously completely discouraged and not sanctioned by halal. So over here, they say the opposite that all the kolos accepted upon themselves are really chumas. Kolos that brings the. For example, a message to cholent, kehesa cholent on Shabbos, but if you bring a whole Shabbos, you can say in Yiddishkeit. Okay. So a level of control always comes from that. The al which we took upon ourselves, our colors so called to sit up late because we to obey this, but MS for Machman ourselves. Okay, okay. So, so, so the Kavachayim says over here, and this is actually very interesting, you know, the, 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 we're trying to learn Taira and Chalamoids, right? One of the, one of the mitzvahs of Chalamoids is to be Misamech your family. So, we can't, the Shir can't go too long. So you have to rejoice with your family. So, the Chiyu the, 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 the of Yontiv is Simcha. Of Yontav is simple. So if there's going to be a stringency of trying to sit in the sukkah and it's going to lead you to discomfort and actual pain, so you're taking the chiyuv of minatayda of, 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 of Simcha's Yontif, which is Simcha, and you're, and, you're, um, and you're trying to do some sort of fancy chumrah of sitting in the sukkah. So, so that, that's a chumrah dosi with the kula. So based on that, if you, if you're, if you, and, and he actually goes on to this to say, he goes on and, and says, if you're on a madrega, um, which you're a person, and this is more uh, emphasized in source 14, which we'll see from the Meiri, from the Rishonim, but if you're on a madrega, where you appreciate the spiritual elevation and the makif from the bina and all these, amazing madrigas that shine in the sukkah and you're not it's not going to detract from your simchas yontif so therefore it's not a chum de kula and therefore it's not a violation of nikkah so so again this is a bit of a stretch because it's not the simple understanding of the rishonim and we saw in the alter Rebbe that the reason for kala isa v'chulu nikkah hadyet but there are great achreinim that do understand it that way and based on that approach there would be um, some room to rationalize a person which is on a very high madrega of experiencing the sensitivity of the sukkah. And he sits in the sukkah and he does not, it does not detract from the simchas yantif, or even if, even if culturally sitting in the sukkah has become something which is joyous, so you can make an argument that, that's, that, that, that is a, that is a halachically sanctioned. Now, an interesting point, I guess, to, to emphasize, how are we doing on time over here? Um, an interesting point to emphasize is that, is that the Rishonim and the Meiri in source 14, the, already, so the Shulchan Aruch in, let, let, let's look at the Shulchan Aruch first and we'll come back to source. Let's look at the source 16, the top of page five. So the Shulchan Aruch over there, this is chapter um, 6, 6, 640, Kafresh Mem. So over there, the Shulchan Aruch discusses pain in the sukkah. Rain is an example of pain. But in general, if there's discomfort in the sukkah, if there's discomfort in the sukkah, you're potter. Um, so there are certain discomforts, and the place can discuss this at, at great length. If, if a person is uncomfortable, so discomfort in many cases is very, very subjective. For person A with a certain personality, he is extremely uncomfortable, he's potter. Person B, which is much more macho and he's not affected by a, a fly. So he's, he's high him. So it's very, very, um, very, very subjective. But here's where it gets complicated. That is all, and, 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 and I'm sorry. So therefore, if you, if you go back to source, the Meirian source 14, he discusses there were Jews in different climates. In certain climates, it was extremely cold, freezing, freezing cold in the sukkah. Actually, my, my brother-in-law, David, showed me a, a, I think it was from Sefer Zechreinus or from the Sikhs of the Fidik Rebbe. Probably another source is better than me. He says that the, I think it was the Rebbe Marash told his maskir to sleep in the sukkah. Maybe it was the Tzamech One of the earlier Rabbeim told her Mishodas to sleep in the sukkah on sukkahs. Oh, who was Mishodas of? Tzamech Tzedek, okay. So he says it's cold. He says the varm kite of the ruchni, so the sukkah is going to warm you up. So it's, a, it's interesting. Uh, context, we see even in, in, in Chabad sources that not sleeping in the sukkah wasn't always, you know, so prevalent and there were exceptions. 
Um, but anyway, so so in cold climates, many people. And at the age of 98, he would dance on the roof of the Bismedrish like a young man. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, so, yeah, he should have done even more. The case over here is that uh, he could have prevented it. A rain, you see, the Altar is not using much of a rain, is because he says if it, the problem was there before, then he kept the Lasuka. Well, we'll talk about that in a second. So, 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 so when, when it comes, so when it comes, so Tsar is very subjective. So, you know, one guy is, uh, so, so if you're, you know, if you're able to handle it more, so, so that's all re in relation to Tsar. And the Meiri, one, one of the great Rishonim, um, so he, one of, he, he says that there were certain great people that they would push themselves to sit in the sukkah. Um, look at the last, last two lines of source 14. So he says that there were great Rishonim, Rabbi Seinu, Rabbi Seinu, that, he, that, in, that in the days of Sukkot, the earlier days of Sukkot, be, uh, sorry, in the, uh, in the, the first nights of Sukkot, they would sit in the Sukkot even if it was extremely uncomfortable. Whereas the layman, the simpleton, the regular person, it was considered extremely uncomfortable. But for that person, because he was on a hechah mitzvah, he loved the mitzvah of Sukkot so much, so he wasn't so bothered by the cold. But that's all. So if the conversation ended and it was all about Tsar, so you can easily explain that the, those that follow the ways of Hasidus are like the the Rabbi Seinu, Rabbi Seinu, Rabbi Seinu that would that were not affected by the pain and they loved the mitzvah so much they had chibu mitzvah and therefore they, they they were able to to say okay I love the mitzvah of sukkah so much and, it, and to me it doesn't pain me I'm I'm part of that minority and if it's a noticeable minority there's no issue of it and then but the problem because so 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 the issue of tsar is is, is rel relatively easy part of this conversation to explain because you can say it's a relative tsar and so on and so forth. Um, but the problem becomes by rain. Rain is a whole new paragraph in the Shulchan Aruch. Rain said, when it comes to rain, it's not just an issue of discomfort, which we can kind of explain. It's an issue of the Moshul, of the Mishnah, the king saying, get, get out of here. So therefore, when it comes to tsar, we can partially explain that there's chibu mitzvah, there's this and that, it's subjective. But when it comes to rain, and that, 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 that's much more complex. Um, as Rabbi Itkin was pointing out, I, I, we don't have time to get into this in detail, but in source, in, in source um, 16, in the, in the Sif and Shulchan Arach, actually, if a, if a sukkah is built, at least according to the opinion of the Ramah, if a sukkah is built in a, in a manner where it, 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 it's, it, it's going to cause tsar to the inhabitants, the sukkah is actually not a kosher sukkah. So, for example, many people don't know this. This is actually something interesting. If you build a sukkah in a neighborhood that has robberies, it's actually interesting. If you, this is about a low shimudim, but if you, if you build a sukkah in a neighborhood that, that's dangerous, if you build a sukkah in, in South Oakland outside, it, 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 if, 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 if this is an area that's known to be you wouldn't be comfortable to sleep out there at night. Actually, according to the Ramah, the Chacham Tzvi has a more lenient opinion. It would, it's not a kosher sukkah. So many of these public sukkahs... You know, you eat. Eat. Not eat. Even to eat there. You can't, you, you, it, it, the sukkah, by definition, is built in a manner... If there's too many mosquitoes in your area, and people can't, can't have a normal meal there, it's not a kosher sukkah. You can't even make a bracha. So, 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 uh, something that is just to keep in mind and important to be cognizant when you're building a sukkah, especially in these public sukkahs, which are obviously uh, never pushed them very much. But if, if it's in a dangerous area, um, probably better to have a have a sukkah mobile and come during the day and bring a sukkah there. But if it's a, if it's a, even you know you have to be you have to think. If you, I'm just curious, uh, you know, you have to speak to the police about this. But if you if you if you bring a sukkah mobile. I always had this question. Downtown Manhattan today, and every ten, depends who's the who's the governor. You know, <laughs> today, you know, we have the the crazy governor, the crazy mayors over there. Downtown Manhattan, you don't want to be there at one o'clock in the morning. Maybe under uh, who's the previous uh, mayor? So, not, so I, I, I always had a shayla. If you're a buffer, I mean, so I mean, you want to make a mezainus and a sukkah park in a dangerous neighborhood. So I'm better to eat a hackle and not make a leisha basuka. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's at least a shaila that needs to be done. Uh, but interesting, if you look at source 17, that Amos says, it's not that you're scared of robbers when you come 
can't steal from you. It's, you're scared that he's going to hurt you or kill you. It's the other one, the mouth shows. It's a little bit of a head there. Most of the smoking in this place, you don't feel like actually It's for Mount Shady Sun. You can check the news. There have been, what do they call them, the car jackings? People come with a gun and they ask you for your keys. I think in the last month there was four. Shady side. So these the, the silas are going to be very relevant. So is the carjacker actually going to, is he just trying to scare you with the gun or is he just, or is he actually want to bang you over the head? I don't know. You don't want to find out, but it, it, it has ramifications if the sook is kosher or not. I want you to speak to it of. As you get said, it up. very subjective. Depends on uh, who went there. But Itkin is not scared. And he's not I tell you about it. Like, is that, that's another argument to go. If, if you pack a carry, if you have a gun, and you're, you're from the chavre of the carry, maybe you're not Monsieur and Lanafsha, then you can make a brach on the sukkah. It's actually, uh, I'm not paskening. I'm just saying it's a, uh, if you, uh, what? So, so this is, uh, there's an argument of to the Yankee the Lin over here, uh, you know, you, the Yankee the Lin, and you carry your your gun, and then uh, yeah, the private. Okay, yeah. Oh, I see. The trains in New York, when they when they move away, you don't hear the noises in the middle of the night. You can't sleep. The noises make them to sleep. So if you build a sukkah under there. Okay. Because it's noise. I don't know. So it's all subjective, not so nice. Okay, we're gonna start. Uh, source 27. Um, source 27. Um, is actually a very cryptic in Mada. And uh, we're not going to do all these sources. We'll, we'll learn the opinion of Rashi and some of the other Rishonim. But uh, over here, you have something very fascinating. And this gets into an important question. Generally, you have, in, 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 many, in, in many yeshivas, when it comes to a um, homiletic in Mada, they often skip it because that's for the, the ladies. The lady, one, the lady, one, the most, the ladies, the ladies, the stories, the yakis, but the we're going to stick with the, uh, the halachic discussion. So over here, we seem to have a bit of a picture. We have a halachic discussion. Oh, it's hard. It's yeah, fine. Here you're bringing me these chassidish and the king pouring water. How, how does this all work? What, is, there, is there halachic um, Rabbi, relevance I'm, to this muscle? I can't so it's hear. actually, a, I, I think it, when I gave this shit the last time we spoke, about 45 minutes on this discussion. So I'm going to try to summarize it in five minutes. But, but, but let, let, let's learn this to go get money. And, and, and it's a little bit complex, but uh, it, it seems simple, but the, the way that you trying to top it off, it's, it's a little, te- it's very technical. Um, so, he boy a little. The Gemara asks, me So you, you, you think you learned the muscle in, 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 in source three, the muscle says, uh, uh, and Lachida, you sitting in the sukkah, you know, the king saying, you know, get out of here. So the Gemara asks, who's pouring the water on who? What do you mean? Seemingly the king's pouring the water on the Abed. How, how else did you learn? The Gemara brings a bride since I said, So, and source 28, turn the page. The long wrap. Let's, let, let's read the last three lines of wrap. It's, it's a lot of. Uh, let, let's read the last lines of. And Rashi's like explaining the question of the Gemara. And with that, you can understand the answer of the Gemara. And according to the, the, the Paiskim, understand Rashi, you actually would come out with a very interesting. Um, window into understanding our custom to sit in the sukkah during the rain, at least according to Rashi's approach. We're not going to learn the Ritzer's approach, which might, um, let's say, uh, mess up this interpretation, but what we're going to attempt to do in the next five minutes is to, un- is to understand Rashi's analysis of the mother. That shed light on the practice of the Balshemtiv 
and, uh, and eat to suck it even more. So here's how Rashi um, analyzes the Gemara. So Rashi, new pirush to the masnis in mi boil. The Gemara is at one. When the what does the what what's the what is the pouring of the water referring to? Is it so it could be two options? Is it yeshiva mm-hmm. oh, one of the great place in source 30 understands Rashi and understands this discussion is the following. Um, and you'll see I'm just gonna reference the main the cliff notes here. So Rabbeinu Hanano in Source 32, also one of the great Not getting any sounds or picture. And I uh, went home. Hello, what happened to the share? Nobody home. <laughs> Hello. The shear went out. It's 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 it, it, it's uh, the the question is I guess the crux of the question is could I still remain sitting in the sukkah? Is sitting in the sukkah post rain a desecration itself? Right. The first approach the the first approach of the Gemara is that there's almost two bad things that take place. Bad sitting in the sukkah so therefore me leaving in the sukkah is a secondary takes and according to that approach yeshivas basuka so the fact that I now leave this because of has to take on And therefore, leaving the sukkah, leaving the sukkah would be the equivalent of you pouring the water. That's the question of the Gemara. When you leave the sukkah, are we now referring to um, two of now the sukkah? So it's it's unfortunate. Is it referring to that Hashem? So, or or number two, is it Hashem pouring the water on us, saying saying that saying that leave the sukkah? Um. Codifiers bring this story. What are they gaining? The Nida Leo Pimasha Pidish Rashi would appear according to a Rashi says, My he Yeshiva Sukkah, you did discuss him. Pidish Marshal Yeshiva Sukkah, Pidush at the Yotze Hemenu Umevatla. 
the sitting in the sukkah, which refers to the fact that now we can't sit in sukkah. According to that first approach, if you wanted to leave the sukkah, you could leave the sukkah if you wanted to. Meaning, the second approach is, is saying that the pouring of the water is the king telling you you have to leave. The first approach is telling you that the king's making it uncomfortable in the, sitting in the sukkah, therefore you want to leave. According to the first approach, there leaves room to say that when the king's pouring the water, he's not saying leave. He's just saying, I'm now setting up a scenario where you'll probably want to leave. And therefore the sukkah, you're, you're therefore going to be lacking in the midst of sukkah. So according to this approach, according to the first understanding of the Gemara, there's room to suggest that sitting in the sukkah can actually be a good thing if, you, if you're up to it. And, you're, and it's not sour for you, and it's not a hadiatus for you, you could sit in the sukkah and in the kayim something. But the problem is, is the Gemara concludes like the second approach, which is the king actually telling you to leave. So according to this understanding of Rabbi Nuchanan, in Rashi, according to the Havamin of the Gemara, it's actually room to suggest that you could leave in the sukkah. So what we conclude is that according to Rashi's Havamina, we could understand the practice of sitting in the sukkah, but according to the Maskana, not. But if you look at the opinion of the Ritva, we're going to have to actually use the Ritva to, um, to understand our approach. The Ritva... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's see the Ritva. Ritva has a little bit of a different spin to understanding these two sides, Hakir and the Gemara. And... If I remember correctly, my, my conclusion five years ago was that according to the Ritva, we can have some appreciation for our approach. But I, I, I left to learn this together. So the Ritva says like this. This is not going back to Surah Story 1, bottom of page 9. Um, so the Ritva says like this. Kashili. So again, the Ritva asks, like, what's the Gemara asking? And seemingly the Mishnah says, clearly, it's the king pouring it on you. What's the Pshat in the Gemara? So he says, the Yesh Loimar. The Dilma Hachikamer. Perhaps this is the analysis of the Gemara, analysis of the question of the Gemara. Mutter Lifnois Min Hadin, Miwa Oise Kain, Doima La Eved Shemeshamish Lerabi, the Kivan Shedoya Shedabi and a Masbur Leiponim Shevak Le Yad Kitain, Loimer Enerate to Lusham. So he says something very fascinating. He says like this. When the king, so different than around. He says, when the king's pouring the water, is the king saying, leave? Or is the king saying, I'm upset with you? Big difference. According to the first approach of the Gemara, the way the Ritz understands it, if I'm understanding this correctly, correct me if you think I'm wrong. According to the first approach of the Gemara, the Gemara is saying that, that it's the Evid staying in the sukkah, the Evid staying in the sukkah is pouring the water back in the master's face. And therefore staying in the sukkah is a bad thing because the king saying leave. According to the conclusion of the Gemara, the king saying you're a goofball. So you leaving is actually, if you want to put this in psychological terms, you're escaping from the problem. You're running away from the problem. The, 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 the king saying you have problem, you have you have issues. You have to do tshuva. So the Ritva, and the Ritva says this, and, 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 and that's the, according to the Ritva, that's the Maskan of the Gemara, that it's the king telling you you have problems, and therefore running away is actually not the correct approach because you need to now serve the king even better. The king saying, You're not serving me. You're not serving me. And here you're busy worried about your portage being messed up. No, Adarabe, do more tshuva and serve me better and become a better person. So according to the Ritva's 
second tzad of the Gemara staying in the sukkah is actually sanctioned. And the first tzad wouldn't sanction it. Rashi is the other way around. And therefore, according to Rashi's approach, the Mastana of the Gemara would actually be saying, leave the sukkah. You have to leave the sukkah. According to the Ritva, the Mastana of the Gemara, the way the, the Tashma would be saying, no. It's the king saying, you're a goofball. Get better. And actually, in the words of the Ritva, leaving would actually be making it even worse in some sense. So therefore, in conclusion, according to the Ritzvah's understanding of the Gemara, we have a, an approach to understanding the Moshul in a manner that would, that would not only allow us to sit in the sukkah, but would explain that sitting in the sukkah is actually a practice that's encouraged and explained, assuming you don't have the issue of hadyotis and tsar and so on and so forth. So essentially, there's three issues. One is being called a hadyot, which we explained based on the base Yosef, that it's become somewhat of a common practice. B, the issue of tsar, again, we saw chavamoid, the mitzvah is very precious to you, therefore there's no, there's no you, you can get away with the tsar issue. According to the Ritzvah's approach to understanding the marshal of the king, there actually is room to understanding um, the concept of the sitting in the sukkah. Okay, let's conclude. We have eight more minutes. Can you make a bracha? We, we conclude you can make a bracha. Yeah. Well, let, 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 let's get into another. So this is actually a fat one. I, 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 in researching this subject about five years ago, um, this is actually a friend of the Ritva, say for Zeta MS. I believe that Eva actually might reference the Sefer in that letter. So this is a, this is a, this is a fascinating um, 18th century um, hoisin where he gives a number of very, very... So the analysis that I just gave you, I was actually inspired by the Zeta Emes. Um, but, again, I, I, I have to say this respectfully because Zeta Emes was a, was a major goggle. Um, I, I believe his analysis of the sugya is somewhat problematic. He basically says along the lines of what I was saying in Rashi. Chayda, that wouldn't work because, it, because according to the Maskan of the Gemara, Rashi's actually saying that there's an issue to sit in the sukkah. But I think the Zeta Emes's shot would fit with the Ritzvah's conclusion of the Gemara, but basically saying the same point that Adarabi, the king's telling you to sit in the sukkah. Um, the king's telling you to sit in the sukkah, and, and uh, the king's telling you you're goofing up, so become better. And he analyzes that into Rashi, but I think it works much better with the Ritzvah. But again, that's a, that's a bit of an analysis. But those that would like to be the Ayin and the Zara Emes, I, I, I think that his point is much more emphasized in the Ritzvah's commentary versus Rashi, but maybe I'm misunderstanding it. Then he concludes that Zara Emes gives another fascinating, fascinating Raya to the Minik to sit in the Sukkah based on a Diuk and Rashi and tracks at Yuma. So we know, actually, the Shemar quotes this regarding a person that has a accidental discharge on Yom Kippur. So the Gemara in track that Yuma says that a person should be concerned and so on and so forth. Um, the mission over there then goes on to bring this exact, I'm sorry, not the mission. Rashi says a person that has a discharge on Yom Kippur is similar to a person that is offering his master some drink and to be moizik place the rabbi and the, and the master throws it in your face because we're talking about an accidental discharge that happens in a, a wet dream they call it and so, so it's not conscious but it's the king causing it to say you have more children so it says the Zeta MS rabbi uh, rabbi Yishmol Mudina he says if, if you take the approach to understanding the Moshul of the king pouring the water to be saying Stop what you're doing. Is the pouring of the water saying stop? Or is the pouring of the water saying improve yourself? So if you apply the conclusion of pouring the water saying stop, then Rashi using that analogy in Tract of Yuma, if you have a wet dream on Yom Kippur, are you not supposed to stop fasting? Of course not. No, no, no one would say that. If you have a keti on Yom Kippur, no one's going to say you should stop fasting. I'm saying it's a sign to do more tshuva. So says the Zeta MS, this is not a this is already uh, before the time, you know, uh, before the, the sort of movement it took off. He's saying, according to that, sit in the sukkah, because do more tshuva, and, and so on and so forth. And that, that's, how he, that's what we conclude based on Rashi.
Another fascinating deal that I did not see people make, but I think if you read the Rashi of the Yemen Shepherd's Kindness, which we're going to see, I'm going to see the Gemara hopefully um, in a minute, the Gemara and, and, and Kindness, um, actually, I don't have the Gemara, but Rashi of the Yemen Shepherd's Kindness, the first page, he talks about this, this muscle. Look at source 35, the bottom of page 11. It says, Moshul Ebed to the limbs of Rabbi, etc., etc. He says, I can't stand your service. You know, my mother, all of us, when she, uh, when she was in a restaurant, the most important thing for her was not the food, it was the service. You know, it was a bad waiter, you know, she, you'll hear about it for the next, a long time. So you have to have good food and good service. So the Abish is saying over here, I don't like the service. Kloimar, Kishagishomim Yordan Lusukah Kol Yoytim. When it rains, people leave. Now, look at this line of Rashi. Rashi says, it seems almost like a chesedish of art. I think this Rashi is mamish, a bomb, yisoid, for those that have the practice of sitting in sukkah. It appears as though Hashem doesn't want your service. Really, he wants your service. That word venida, I think, is a strong smach to the, the practice to sit in the soup. Now, let me show you, um, okay, I'll show you two more, I think, strong proofs to support this custom of sitting in the soup during the rain. Um, and I, uh, source 37, Gemara, and source 40, Gemara. Two Gemaras, but I think that, I think that, it, it, the, the, uh, there's been a lot of discussion and analysis about this practice, but I think this mamish takes the cake because this is a practice that the whole world does. If you look in the Shulchan Aruch, based on the Gemara and of Zion, the first night of Sukkot, everybody sits in the Sukkah and eats at least a Kezayis of bread in the Sukkah on the first night. Why? Learn it out from Pesach, and the whole uh, interesting Zed Shava, and so on and so forth. There's a whole bunch of dinim, first night of Sukkot, which you compare it to Pesach, and therefore one of them is that you sit in the Sukkah even during the now, Let me ask you a bunch of I never got a good answer to this question. If you take the approach, and again, obviously this, this needs an answer, but I don't know what the answer is. It, it, it's good. It's a, okay, fine. But, so, so if you take the approach of, let's say, the Rashi in, 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 the, in the Mascona, or the Ritva in the Hava, that, 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 that rain represents Hashem saying Lee. Is Hashem, is Hashem saying improve or is Hashem saying improve? If the concept of rain is saying Hashem saying leave, so it's more challenging, I agree with you, so love, it's more challenging to understand this prevalent practice of the Taita telling us that the first night is different. If rain means leave, why is the first night different? You have to come on to all these Titus that the rain the first night represents this, the rain the other night represents that. You have to come on to this climate, that climate. But if you take the approach like the Maskan of the Ritva and, and the ZMS and, and Rashi and Highness, and, and that, that rain is not essentially Hashem saying leave. Rain is Hashem saying improve. It's easier to understand this halacha that everyone sits in the sukkah the first night, even though it's raining, at least eat a kazais. Again, they're, they're obviously, according to the Maskana Rashi and the Havamina the Ritva, and other approaches, you have to explain this din the first night differently, but it's a little more, it's more challenging to understand this din. I'll conclude with one, with, with, with um, and so in source 40, you have a, um, a famous Gemara Navayi Zara, which if you learn this Gemara, I think there is some support for, for the, the practice of sitting in the sukkah even during the rain. So this is essentially a Gemara that uh, um, is actually interesting. I was, I was listening to a ta, a ta a, I was listening to nah, about, Brian Zayda, um, 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 so there in Halakha Salvei the Zara, he tells a very interesting story. He says he was once sitting by a Moshe Feinstein, and they were discussing a practical halacha regarding something in relation to a church. And and the, the Moshe was Mekel. Anyway, it's a whole thing, a, a line analysis. But Hermosha took a lenient approach. He 
says, as I say in the Ramo. He's quoting the Ramo. So like Brian couldn't understand what, what are you referring to? The Ramo, the Ramo doesn't say what it Reminds me of another story. Uh, Pinchas Hirschbrun was once traveling around. Uh, um, Pinchas Hirschbrun, famous Rosh Hashiva in Montreal. So he was once traveling around. You know, he was, was he, he wanted to meet all the Gidoyim, all, all the great Jewish scholars around the world. And after his trip, someone asked him, so who's the, who, who's the biggest? So, so he started guessing. He says, was there, was there a Moshe Feinstein? He says, or Moshe, when he quoted, once quoted a Lush and Rashi, he was off by a letter. Right. He, 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 he says, who is the greatest? He says, the stiplers are doing it. Chaim Kanievsky. Uh, this was in the this was in the man that only passed away a few years ago. So 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 Moshe Feinstein, you know, he knew everything. Well, he was misquoting the Ramah. So he found out that Moshe Feinstein had the old version of the Shulchan Aruch, which the Christians, the Tanzer, had edited. He put in the Ramah the opinion that it was more favorable for the Christians. <laughs> so, so he showed him that it's not the. Um, so, so this is a Gemara which did not be very favorable in the Goyim and the Goyim. I the guy you must have missed this this page. So this Gemara is talking about the mitzvah of the sukkah, comparing the way the Jews, um, the Jews approach the mitzvah of sukkah and, and, and the Gentiles. What does the Gemara say? That the Abishter put the the, 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 the sun and the, 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 the Gentiles ran out of the sun. Um, and, the, and so on and so forth. And it says the Yidden were not like that. So, 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 so everyone's bothered. You have to leave the sukkah. You have, to, you have to leave the sukkah if there's tzar. So there's lots of answers. What's the what's the teichin of the Gemara? The Gemara is saying that 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 when you leave the, the Gemara says Gemara is saying that the goyim left the sukkah. They didn't either. They either they left the sukkah with the with the right approach, or they were upset. They didn't run out of the sukkah. But the bottom, the teichin of the Gemara is that. We should make an effort to want to sit in the sukkah and not be like the guy. In other words, the whole teichin of the comparing the yidden to the guy is, 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 is how quickly they run away from the sukkah. So, so we, see, we see over there, you decide that the, our approach to sukkah should be to try to not run away from the sukkah. And, 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 and I think this gemara makes it more geschmack to understand that approach of when, when, it, when it's raining, it's not Hashem saying, leave the sukkah. It's Hashem saying, Become better, and therefore not not need to have to have, to have the rain and, and be and be reminded of the um of the of the. I'll just conclude with one and, and I reminded of that. I'll just conclude with one verse that I heard from a friend of mine that uh, he says in the Gerusim Ashpiim they say like this that uh, and actually this rabbi that I I, I prepared to share for um, uh, um, uh, I sent it to him he, he, every year I used to ask him did you, did you listen to my share yet. Uh, uh, Maybe I'll send them again. 